Hello, welcome to the ACC 2018 Review. I'm Jess Gomez from the Intermountain Medical Center Heart Institute, and I'm joined today by one of our cardiovascular researchers, uh, Dr. Jared Bunch. And one of the uh, things that is getting a lot of attention here in the beginning stages of the conference is a light-breaking trial uh, by the name of VEST. Talk uh, to us a little bit about that. And so this is a trial that um, looks at the use of a wearable defibrillator. Okay. So when somebody has a heart attack, by guidelines, we can't put in a defibrillator, even if they're at moderate to high risk for the first 30 days if they didn't okay. receive a stent or a bypass, okay. or 90 days if they did. And post the patient's post heart attack, the first month or two is their highest risk for death. Really? So we continually go back to this concept, can we provide a defibrillator to stop sudden death? Now, uh, some of the background to this, there's been two defibrillator trials, randomized trials mm -hmm. that failed to show benefits. The defibrillators worked, they shocked people for appropriate rhythms, but the people died anyway because their hearts were sick. And there's also been a surgical trial where they put in, they did a bypass surgery and put in a defibrillator, and again, that didn't show benefit. Yeah. But now we have wearable defibrillators. They're easy to prescribe, mm -hmm. people can take them on and off. They, they don't require an operation, and so there was a hope perhaps that these can save a few people mm. that may not otherwise been saved and um, improve outcomes. And well, so it was retried again, that same question. Yeah, well that's a great study. What are you hoping for the outcome? Well, I think as an electrophysiologist, you'd want to see these people receive appropriate shocks and live long enough that we can put a defibrillator in them. But what we learned today from this large randomized trial was that just like the defibrillator trials, we didn't lower sudden death risk. The mm. sudden death rates were identical. Um, unfortunately, total mortality was changed, but that's multifactorial in these patients. And the device really is only designed to treat sudden death. So we can't really say it impacted total mortality when it didn't impact the heart rhythm. But there are some aspects to wearing a device. People get more follow-up, you're communicating with the doctor more sure. often, and perhaps that process of more frequent follow-up can help. There was a slightly more, more, more strokes in the placebo arms, mm -hmm. and people reported more shortness of breath mm -hmm. in the placebo arm, and those would suggest maybe the placebo arm was a little sicker, and that's why there was a higher mortality. So unfortunately, adding now to two defibrillator trials and a bypass defibrillator trials, we again don't have good defibrillator, whether implantable or wearable technologies to improve mm. sudden death after heart attack. And I think at Intermountain, we met with these teams years ago and we said, well, why don't you look at a different group? Why don't you take people that aren't so sick, that, there's, that their eject fraction isn't so reduced, mm -hmm. and consider studying those. They're still at high risk. So people that have an ejection fraction instead of below 35, of 35 to 50, and put def wearable defibrillators on them. So we're hopeful that the company will use this data and really design another trial because mm -hmm. there's still a lot of sudden death post heart attack. Well, thank you so much. We yeah, appreciate that summary of VEST. And we welcome you to stop by the Intermountain Medical Center Heart Institute booth, booth number 1229 in the exhibit hall here at ACC. We appreciate you joining us today and have a great day.